The beauty of science's conclusions can change. There's nothing wrong with it. That's the way it's supposed to work. And that's how we know that it does work. It makes predictions. We can test those predictions and we can revise our theories in light of new data. What I don't believe in is scientism, which is to take the conclusions of science and to then make them into generalizations and say that this is going to, you know, is set in stone. Can you name anybody who says this? No scientist says that it's set in stone. This is just a tactic to attack people who value science greater than your religious ideology, which you do hold as set in stone. And philosophers of science understand this. They understand that all science can do is give you workable models and just because something works, it doesn't mean it's... If it works, then it is true in a scientific sense. There is no such thing as truth in an absolute sense. True. For example, a philosopher of science in uh, Texas, Larry Loudon, he put together a philosophical paper of 30 empirically successful theories, which were giving you predictions which were confirmed again and again and again and again, which then turned out to be false. It is important to note that Loudon's lists was not randomly selected, but rather was cherry-picked in order to argue against a thesis of scientific realism. Loudon's list was not a representative sample of scientific theories, as all entries on that list were theories that were abandoned more than a hundred years ago during the time of the first 5% of all scientific work ever done by scientists. There is no graveyard of dead scientific theories. I will link this paper in the description. What alternatives are you aware of to Darwinian evolution? Well, I'm aware of like creationism and other religious... There things. you go, yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah. Forget that for now. What naturalistic alternatives are you aware of? I'd like to hear from them. Okay. And all of these were put together by evolutionary biologists who are atheists. They don't believe in intelligent design. They don't believe in creationism. They don't believe in anything like that. And they've taken the same data and they've come up with a different interpretation. Evolution by natural genetic engineering, put together by James Shapiro. Neo-Lamarckian evolution, which is put together by Eva Jablanka. Uh, Neo-mutation put together by Masatoshi Nai from Japan, Lynn Margulis, symbiotic evolution in terms of an alternative, not the origin of eukaryotic cells, and evolution by self-organization put together by Stuart Kaufman. All of these guys yeah. are atheists and they don't believe natural selection explains biodiversity and human behavior. I addressed these alternative evolutionary theories in my video called Should Muslims Believe in Evolution? A Response. Sabor needs to demonstrate how these alternative theories can or cannot coexist with modern synthesis. Current thinking is that other mechanisms can play a role, the importance of which is up for debate. None of the scientists disbelieve in a natural selection as you suggest. The question is of the relative importance of the mechanisms. My conclusion is, this is something not set in stone. Nobody ever said it was set in stone. No fossil can be shown to be another one's ancestor purely because it doesn't come with a birth certificate. Fossilization is a rare event. We cannot demonstrate that a particular fossil is an ancestor or that this organism which is fossilized produced offspring. What we do know is that if there is one fossil of a creature, then living at that same time must be many others of the same species and likely similar species. Demonstrating how the species change over time provides good evidence for evolution. The senior editor of Nature, Henry Gee, who's an atheist and a paleontologist, he says to take a line of fossils and to claim ancestry is not a scientific hypothesis which can be tested for a bedtime story. And he says it's impossible to link one thing to another in terms of fossils. Of course, Sabor has to try and put in a quote to help his position. This particular quote from Henry Gee is from his book, In Search of Deep Time his book about cladistics, The Science of Comparison, written in 1999. Fossils are just one part of the evidence demonstrating evolution. To dismiss this line of evidence, you need to come up with a better explanation for the change in appearance of creatures over time. I believe human beings came as they were. Where is your evidence for that statement? Can you explain why humans are absent from the earlier fossil records? Can you explain the appearance of early hominins in the fossil record? As, as they, as are, they are. Do you think we're, fossils we're, are false? Okay, no fossil, and this is according to paleontologists, no fossil can be shown to be a non-human primate ancestor. 
there is a preponderance of evidence. This can establish non-human primate ancestors beyond reasonable doubt. All they have is speculation based upon homology. In addition to the fossil record, we also have genetics, which is an even greater evidence for common ancestry. Okay, that's all they have. Human primate ancestors. So for example, whether you have Lucy, you have Homo naladi, whatever you have, it's speculation. That's all you have. Do you have a better explanation to explain this then, Subor? As a Muslim, because of the book, you will never believe, no matter how much evidence is put forward to you, that humans have evolved from the same ancestor as a chimpanzee or a gorilla. The belief in the Quran is based upon reason for me. And because it's based upon reason, there must be things which are testable and falsifiable okay, as well. Yeah. Please tell me where in your book is something that is testable and falsifiable. And would you be prepared to accept the results of any test that does falsify your book?